Hello everybody and <coughs> welcome to Granddad's Forge. Today, bottle opener blues. I'm going to discuss what I went through and my personal idea of fixing my bottle opener blues. Then we're going to be making a church key bottle opener. That's probably going to slide into two parts. Uh, at some point you're going to be listening along with me to uh, James over at County Line Forge. He's doing a live stream tonight and I'm going to try to be kept keeping tabs on that. So that will be playing in the background while uh, we're working on this. So uh, come along for the ride. Enjoy. Okay. Bottle opener blue starts with the twist. So let me explain to you what's going on here. Uh, some of these twists, for example, this modified shark's tooth. This shar uh, shark's tooth. This gator. All they have in common is you're cutting completely all the way around during your prep work. You're chiseling or cutting in into the center and then of course almost every single uh, twist starts with a deep groove down the side on the all sides that's cutting towards the center cut a long story short you're giving yourself a tiny little spot in the uh, in the twist that's actually holding the whole thing together so as one newbie to another uh, experiment with how deep you actually need those grooves. I overcompensated. I was cutting way deep with my with my different grooves as I was prepping the twists and basically I think I was going too deep not giving myself enough meat. Then one whack uh, while trying to, to drift this it just gave up the ghost. So uh, that's one thing to consider about twisting. Second thing to consider about twisting, which was, this is basically just a twisting fail, not so much bottle opener, but when you're twisting, sometimes it, it'll get to different temperatures and you're going to have to correct the twist. For example, this one looks pretty nice, but at some point we had to cool the area that looked nice, reheat it, and continue to twist until we got it looking even. That happens sometimes. It's best just to make sure the whole thing is evenly hot. You do it as quick as possible. Chances are the whole thing's going to twist evenly. You're not going to have that issue. But when you go back and put this in the vise, A, make sure you cool the part that's already been twisted. And B, sometimes on your first uh, twist, you have it in the vise, you're starting to twist, but certain parts, for whatever reason, are getting colder. So what happens is, you see that you're not getting the twist you want so you keep cranking trying to get that twist and you get that twist only to find out that down here uh, where it was still plenty hot it continued to twist with you and twisted right off so just be mindful of those things that can happen to you those happen to me first time out of the gate now I'm about to disclose to you probably the number one thing I learned about making a twisted bottle opener. Okay, first of all, here's the normal process. I would take my twist, flatten this baby out. By the way, none of these are even close to being finished. They're just examples. Then I would get a slot punched in. Once I got the slot punched in, uh, as you can see, this is a somewhat clean punch. If you don't let your uh, metal cool enough, you'll have to deal with this crap. Uh, the metal was still hot. It, it punched through, but it didn't want to give up because it was still kind of soft and instead of a crisp pop. Uh, the most glorious thing you will get as a new smith is watching that slug pop out. Here's the slug. It did not pop out. This was not glorious. This can be fixed over at the grinder. Not a big deal. And then we continue on. Just a thought. Then the next thing you do is drift the hole. Basically what I do is you put it in here and you drift like crazy. One thing I keep forgetting to do though, is try to make this hole a little even as you're drifting. Now this needs drifted more. 
I just stopped this for the video. But as you're drifting, make sure you do this deal where you keep putting the drift over in each corner and it'll somehow make your, uh, it'll, it'll help make your uh, hole a little bit more even. You can even do it when you've got a good hold fast. You can still manipulate it around. There's a little bit enough play. I really love these hold fasts. Uh, this seems to be almost more functional for me personally than those fancy uh, hold down hooks, hold fasts. But uh, obviously I'm going to be getting, making one of those and trying it out eventually. Then, next thing is you're going to put this baby up in your hardy hole and run this over it to try to get it rounder. As you can see, I'm a newbie. See all these cold shuts that need ground out. Uh, most of the stuff can be avoided just by being a better smith. Practice, technique, practice, learning. Once you get learning down, then you can actually learn and then you can learn how to practice. But once you get your practicing down and in improving your techniques, uh, you will find you waste less time over at the grinder and the, the belt sanders and all that by getting it right the first time here. Uh, okay, so you ready for the big, big secret to making a good bottle opener? I don't know. But as from one newbie to another, my secret is don't do this. Okay, are you listening? Make your bottle opener part first, okay? This was a uh, 5 8 square bar. Use whatever you want. But this turn this started out 5 8 square bar. Make your bottle opener part first, okay? Once you get that down, then decide what twist you're going to make. That also comes in handy if you have a chance to make like let's say 20 bottle openers, but you don't know who or what is going to want to buy what in the area. Twists are actually kind of fast. I, I find the bottle opening part more involved. These are kind of easy to do in my opinion. So what you could do is you could almost make your bottle orders to order at that point or make more of whatever flips your boat that day. I mean come on. Yeah we, we think about customers, we think about pleasing people, but ultimately this is for us this is for you this is this is this is what cures the soul bending this hot metal at your will you are in charge of this world make it your world you do what you want to do you make what you want to make uh, I'm sure there are professional Smiths out there that don't have that luxury but I still think that they put every effort into making that a reality is to still do it for them. I've heard famous, uh, famous, uh, I think it was Roy Adams actually, said, I could make S hooks all day long and make a wonderful living, but I don't want to make S hooks every day, all day long. Okay, you got that? So, uh, okay, that's my little rant on bottle opener blues. Now you can turn into a cheery song. Thanks. Basic church key bottle opener. Uh, before we get started with that, let me do a shout out to North Country Forge. Steve has joined the inner circle of madness, the uh, Forging a Forward group that uh, are doing YouTube videos and uh, all the uh, all the associated uh, YouTubers that uh, associate with us and we talk back and forth sometimes on a personal basis and sometimes through YouTube. But Steve at North Country Forge, he's now a part of that. Uh, he's going to be starting to make some videos. He's an exceptionally good beard grower. Well, okay, and blacksmith. And uh, we'll uh, be looking forward to his videos. So I'll put a link to his channel down below please subscribe and ring the bell for his channel and of course if you haven't done that for me I'm granddad this is granddad's forge you know uh, if you haven't subscribed by now I hope the guilt is consuming you because I need it and I don't really need it but, uh, 
Anyway, uh, let's get started on these uh, church key bottle openers, okay? I think she's hot. Now, yes, you may do this differently, but here's what I'm going to be doing today. I cut off one inch by quarter inch by five inches, uh, a couple of these blanks. Then, these are the punches I'll be using. Uh, this I may or may not use. Uh, sometimes I use that to get a, uh, a slot punch started, but this is basically my slot punch. And this is my rounded punch. Uh, it's kind of iffy. Uh, I may have to redress it, but uh, that'll make the button in my uh, thing eventually, in my bottle opener. And these will be used just as basic decorations for today, uh, just for a quick demo. This is an eyeball. Uh, this is another kind of eyeball or round dot. And this is a curved chisel, which can also be used as a curved line. Uh, so that's that. The tongs I'm beginning to use uh, for this particular thing is my box, box jaws that I made, don't laugh, they work great. Okay, that's all, it, that's all it matters, they work great. These come in valuable. They may look like just regular old puny things, but these will get stuff out of the back of your forge without scalding you to death or frying your hair or whatever. Uh, I strongly suggest making a long uh, skinny pair just just to grab stuff out of the forge to get them close to your real tongs This I'll be using mainly for uh, driving punches and uh, uh, splitting uh, This is my handle drift I need to dress this part. It's starting to chunk out again. Uh, I sanded it off earlier but as you can see it's already starting to split so I think I just gotta cut it down deeper next time but basically this is a handled drift this is what makes the uh, loop in the bottle opener this gets it started and uh, invaluable tool but for actual forging my Hans Graf number one it's becoming my favorite hammer because of the weight I think also because of the handle, I like, I'm digging the handle. This rounding end and this flat end have been invaluable for these bottle openers, so that's a big deal. Another Hans Groff gifting. A wheel or a window weight that they use in windows, and this makes an awesome hold down. You just stick it under there, and it's grippy. Uh, I would say it's less fuss than the really cool hold fast that you see. It looks like a shepherd's hook that you tap down. It just seems better. And then the thing that changed my life most with making bottle openers was this baby. This is a piece of jackhammer and uh, uh, jackhammer bit that Jim Patterson gave me for this very reason. And man, my son made this. You slide your bottle opener on there, and you can get a nice round surface. I believe this is S7, so it's pretty dang sturdy. And uh, maybe I'll put a collar on this later on so I don't have to fight with it, because when I'm hammering on this, this gets wedged, obviously. But for right now, working great. That's pretty much the tools, other than the, the forge and my digits here. Those are pretty much the tools I'll be using today to make a church key bottle opener. Thanks.
There's going to be a part two. Why? This is my new hold down. you got to have the right tool for the right job or you're just going to be pissed off. And this old chain, which originally came with this, has broken four times since I started filming this. So uh, I'm going to fix this and upload what I got and we'll finish this wonderful bottle for a little bit later on. Thank you. Bye. And remember, if you thunk it, you got to make it. No, actually, it's if you thunk it, now you got to make it. Be sure and subscribe, hit the dinghy bell, make sure you read the description below for extremely important information for other guys, and uh, we'll see you in part two of Church Key Bottle.